Good evening, Evan Grove Charter School. We are back again for another edition of our Sunday Evening Book Club. It's my favorite time of the week. Me too. And we, um, well, this weekend is an extended weekend for everyone. Right, we're only halfway through our weekend. That's right. So hopefully you have some either fun and exciting plans um, or sometimes just sitting at home, being with family, not doing too much is nice as well. So. Absolutely, and especially with Martin Luther King Jr.'s day tomorrow, I know yeah. there's a lot of events happening in the community where you mm -hmm. can be giving back and servicing the community and your neighbors around you. So if you're doing any of those fun things, please let Mrs. Johnson and I know. We'd love to hear about it and celebrate it with you. That's right. And National School Choice Week is coming up soon. And during that week, we're going to be announcing some opportunities of things that we are going to be doing for the remainder of the year in each of the communities where um, our students are from. That's so right. yes, be on the lookout for that. So we are going to continue with Chapter 5 of our Magic Treehouse book, Revolutionary War Wednesday. So the last thing we had to determine, I think we asked you to guess or think about what soldier we was, um, they were talking about or we were going to be reading about. I did have a few friends come up and tell me and they got it right. All right. So here we go. Chapter 5, The Letter. George Washington. It was George Washington. I know, it was George Washington. Very exciting. George Washington, really, said Annie. Yeah, I think he is, said Jack. Wow, where'd he go, said Annie. I want to see him again. Come on. She started toward the river. Wait, don't go far, said Jack. I just want to make sure it's him. He opened the Revolutionary War book. He found a picture of the boats and the riv on the riverbank. He read... When General George Washington gathered his troops by the Delaware River, he was commander-in-chief of the whole American army. The general led the army for six years until America became a free and independent nation. In 1789, he was elected the first president of the new United States. Uh-oh, man, <coughs> it is him, said Jack. He pulled out his notebook and wrote, General George Washington helped America become independent. Hey, what are you writing? Someone asked. Jack looked up. A bearded soldier was pointing at him. Jack shoved the Revolutionary War book and his notebook into his bag. Nothing, sir, he said. He started walking away. The man shouted after Jack, but Jack ran down toward the river and lost himself in a crowd of soldiers. When he looked over his so shoulder, he was relieved. The bearded man was nowhere in sight. Stop, young man! Someone shone a lantern right in Jack's face. Jack gasped. It was the captain. I told you to go home, Jack, the captain said sternly. Where's your sister? Jack looked around. Where was Annie? I don't know, he said. Find her at once and go back to your family, the captain ordered. Our secret mission is very important. Children will only get in the way. Yes, sir, said Jack. The cap captain started to leave, but he stopped. I wonder if you could do me a favor, Jack, he asked. Sure, said Jack. The captain pulled out his letter. This is my letter to my children, he said. It's a farewell letter. Would you please take it back with you to Frog Creek? Yes, sir, said Jack. You must only send it if you hear that we have failed in our mission and many patriots were lost, said the captain. Yes, sir, said Jack. The captain handed his letter to Jack. I copy the general speech for my children, the captain said. If anything bad happens to me, I hope those words will give them courage. Do you remember in the story what they said they were looking for? Yes, something to send. Hmm. Very interesting. The captain then turned and disappeared into the crowd. Good luck, Captain, Jack called. He hoped he would never have to send the letter to the man's children. Suddenly, Jack clutched the letter to his chest. Send, he whispered. This letter was the writing they'd been looking for. Something to send. You were right, Mrs. Yes. Anderson. Yes, I bet you got that as well. <laughs> he and Annie could go home now. Their mission was over. Jack shoved the captain's letter into his bag. Now he just had to find Annie. As he looked around, he shivered. Where is she, he muttered. Jack started moving through the crowd, looking for Annie. 
It was hard to see. The wind was blowing harder. The snow fell faster. Jack started to panic. Annie, he called as he wove quickly in and out of the crowd. He kept calling for her. None of the soldiers noticed him. They were all too busy. Finally, Jack came to the river. Through the lamp-lit mist, he saw soldiers waiting to get into the boats. Some had already climbed aboard. Jack, came a cry. Jack saw the figure of a small girl. She was sitting in the back of the biggest boat. No way, he whispered. Jack charged down to the boat. He stood at the edge of the water. What are you doing? What are you doing? Jack shouted. This is George Washington's boat, Annie said. It's our big chance to spend some time with him. We might not get another one. Jack looked at the other end of the huge boat. Through the mist and falling snow, he saw the commander-in-chief talking to his crew. We can't go with him, said Jack. We'll get in the way of his secret mission. Besides, we have something to send now. What? How? said Annie. A letter. The captain gave me his letter to take back to Frog Creek, said Jack. We're only supposed to send it if something bad happens to the captain. We can go home now. Oh, can't we go a little later, Annie asked. Jack, Jack climbed into the boat to pull her out. No, come on, he said, taking her hand. Suddenly, the crew moved to the back of the boat near Jack and Annie. The men grabbed their oars and started pushing the boat away from the shore. We're taking off, said Annie. No, we have to get out, Jack said to the rowers. But the men were working too hard to pay attention. They were using their oars to hack up the ice at the edge of the river. Excuse me, Jack said in a loud voice. Just then, the boat jolted forward. Jack nearly lost his balance. The boat broke through more ice. Rough waves sloshed against its sides. We have to go back, said Jack. It's too late, said Annie. They were headed across the Delaware River. Chapter 6 crossing the Delaware. The huge boat rocked in the water. Giant chunks of ice smashed against its sides. Thanks a lot, Annie, Jack whispered. He shivered in the snowy cold. We're not supposed to go on their secret mission with them. It's okay, she whispered. Maybe we can help George Washington. Are you nuts? Jack whispered. We should be on our way home now. The boat hit a piece of ice. The boat bounced, then dipped into the river. Jack clung to the wooden side. He hoped they wouldn't turn over. Nobody could survive in this icy water, he thought. It would be like sinking on the Titanic. The crew fought hard to keep the boat moving forward. They rowed past chunks of ice into a smoother part of the river. Light from oil lamps shone on the water, making the ice chunks behind them glow like huge glittering jewels. Jack looked back. Other boats were following them. They were filled with soldiers, horses, and cannons. Where exactly are we going? Annie whispered. Jack shrugged. He reached into his bag and pulled out their Revolutionary War book. By the dim lantern light in the boat, he searched through the book. He found a painting of General George Washington crossing the Delaware River. He showed the painting to Annie. They each read the caption silently. After George Washington crossed the Delaware, he led his men on a nine-mile march to a British post. The post was filled with Hussein's, Hussein's? German soldiers hired by the British to fight for them. The American patriots caught them off guard. They never thought the patriots would attack on a stormy Christmas night. It was a great victory for the patriots. They captured almost a thousand soldiers and hardly any of Washington's men were lost. Yay, we won't have to send the captain's letter, Annie exclaimed. Shh, Jack said. But George Washington turned around and looked back at Jack and Annie. Oh no, Jack thought, caught again. He closed his eyes as if that would make him invisible. He's coming, said Annie. Jack looked up. George Washington was making his way back toward them. In the next moment, the commander-in-chief loomed above them like a giant shadow. Children, he asked in a quiet, angry voice. Sorry, Jack squeaked. Merry Christmas, said Annie. But George Washington did not say Merry Christmas back. <laughs> Chapter 7, Spies. 
What are you doing here? George Washington asked. The commander-in-chief sounded furious. So I probably should have said, what are you doing here? George Washington asked. We made a mistake, Jack said. We, we didn't mean to come. George Washington turned to the rowers. Who let these children sneak aboard? He asked in a stern voice. The men looked at Jack and Annie with surprise. It's not their fault, Annie said quickly. They were working too hard to notice us. Just then the boat banged against the ice. The ice cracked, the boat moved on, the, then it bumped against the shore. Two soldiers jumped out and pulled the boat up the shore. George Washington looked at Jack and Annie. This boat is returning to get more men. He said, when it does, you two will get out and stay on the other shore. Yes, sir, said Jack. He felt very embarrassed. George Washington then gave orders to the rowers. Make sure these children do not board any other boats when you return, he said. The general stepped onto the riverbank. The wind started to pick up. The snow fell harder. As the crew unloaded the boat, neither Jack nor Annie spoke. Jack was miserable. They had caused trouble for George Washington just when the general was trying to make America an independent nation. Jack desperately wished he and Annie had gone home earlier. They watched more and more boats land on the riverbank. As the soldiers unloaded their weapons and horses, a freezing rain began. Now rain, snow, and sleet fell together. Jack heard George Washington call to one of his men. This storm is getting worse, Major, the general said. Yes, sir, the Major said. I think we are in for a blizzard, said Washington. Yes, sir. Our mission may be hopeless, sir, said the Major. Should we call it off? No, you shouldn't, Jack whispered. You're going to win. Should we turn back, sir, the Major said. No, no, said Annie. She stood up. The boat rocked. Don't turn back, George Washington, she shouted. You have to march on, sir. You have to attack, sir. Shh. Jack tried to pull Annie back down. We're not supposed to know about their secret mission. How does she know about our plans, Major? George Washington asked. Listen to us, sir, said Annie. You are going to win. She pulled away from Jack and jumped out of the boat. Annie! Jack leaped onto the riverbank. He scrambled after Annie up the steep, icy slope. You have to lead your men, General Washington, sir, Annie said. They're going to be surprised. They think no army will be marching on a night like this. How do you know all this? The Major shouted above the storm. How do you know what they are doing and thinking? I, I, for once, Annie seemed at a loss for words. She just guessed, said Jack. Just then, the bearded soldier who had yelled at Jack earlier stepped forward. I saw this boy earlier, he said. He was writing things down. No, I, I was just... Now Jack was at a loss for words. Seize them, the Major shouted. They're spies. Oh. All right. Well... I guess you'll have to turn back next Sunday to see what happens. I can't wait. I don't know. Well, thank you everybody for coming and joining us for a, another edition of our Sunday Evening Book Club. We look forward to seeing you bright and early Wednesday morning. So enjoy your a long weekend. Have a good night. Good night.